Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are actually talking about cooling solutions, specifically one that was actually covered by Linus Tech Tips very recently, and that is the IC uh, Graphite Thermal Pad here from Innovation Cooling. Now what actually makes this thermal pad a little bit different than other thermal applications uh, that you can use on your CPUs, or I guess even your uh, GPUs if you are willing to cut it down to size, is that this pad is fully reusable because it's not any kind of paste and it doesn't degrade when it goes through heat cycles. So when the processor gets really, really hot, it's not drying anything out here. Uh, it's not getting crusty and it won't chip away. It's just a uh, thermal graphite pad that you just place on top of the CPU. Then you put your uh, heat sink on top of that and you have a cooling solution. And supposedly anyways, and even Linus found this to be true, you can use this completely instead of something like a traditional thermal paste, which I am comparing the graphite thermal pad to. Uh, in this case, I'll be using the Arctic MX4 thermal compound. And uh, right now in the background behind me here, I'm actually getting some baseline readings for the idle temperature of my Ryzen 2600 system running at, I believe, 1.4 volts and 4.1 gigahertz. So the testing methodology is actually really simple today. I'm gonna take idle readings for both the thermal pad as well as the traditional compound, and then also take 30 minute full system load under IDA64 readings for, again, the thermal pad as well as the traditional compound and see how the two compare. And just based off of Linus's video, I expect they'll be somewhat similar, though it does look like at least preliminary results from Linus was uh, the thermal compound will still probably outperform the graphite pad, but not by a wide margin. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graphite pad closer while this system behind me actually runs the stress test for the traditional compound. We'll swap it out and we'll go from there. So here we have the graphite pad, obviously quite reflective in uh, the light here, but this is the 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter pad. Uh, it is sold in a 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter variant, which may be more appropriate for Intel CPUs. Uh, seems like the IHSs on the Intel chips have a slightly smaller surface area in general. But all you have to do here is place the pad on top of the CPU, and then you just put your cooling solution on top of it, and it supposedly nearly equals the performance that you'll get from a traditional compound. So given that I've already actually watched Linus's video, and I'm sure many of you also have, my results are not at all unsurprising. The IC Graphite Thermal Pad performed almost as good as a traditional uh, thermal compound being just a few degrees off in the idle temperatures as well as under full load. But that performance difference is offset by just how easy it is, first of all, to apply the thermal pad. The only thing you have to watch for is when you are actually placing the heat sink on the processor that you don't shift the thermal pad a little bit because there is nothing holding it on top of that IHS. But once you get your heat sink down, there's no mess, there's no cleanup, there's no worrying about just how much thermal compound you need to put on. And then of course, later on down the road, you can just continue reusing it over and over and over. And especially if you're somebody that is constantly swapping out parts, or maybe you uh, have your own YouTube channel and you have a test bench of some kind, uh, the ease of cleanup and the ease of of access to this particular thermal solution is just so much nicer than a traditional thermal compound. In fact, I believe I'm gonna go ahead and leave the graphite pad on my test bench, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, and when I do eventually take it off, it will be nice to be able to just pull a thermal pad off of the IHS and move on without having to worry about cleaning up a traditional thermal compound. So this thermal pad actually did very, very well compared to what I actually thought it would do. Even though I had already seen Linus's video, I'd already read all the claims online, it still feels a little bit wrong just putting a thermal pad on top of a processor instead of a little uh, blob of thermal compound. But if you're interested in buying the graphite thermal pad for yourself, I'll leave a couple links down below, one to the 40 by 40 40 millimeter pad and another one to the 30 by 30 millimeter pad. Obviously, depending on the size of your CPU's IHS will inform you as to which pad you should be buying. And of course, if you like these videos and you wanna see more of them, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below and let me know what you think about this thermal solution. Is it something you're willing to consider for one of your own builds? You can follow me as usual on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware and I'll see you guys in the next video.